you can start now sir. yeah shall i start yes please yeah good afternoon and namaskar myself uh, ap singh from national center for seismology ministry of earth sciences uh, welcome you all in this uh, 26th uh, uh, live talk of the MOES webinar series. I'm thankful to Ministry of, uh, thankful to Secretary Ministry of Earth Sciences and Director National Center for Seismology for providing this opportunity. I also thankful to Dr. Venu Vasthala and his team for providing the technical support. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to speak about the concept of seismology. Uh, seismology basically is the science of earthquake or you can say that it peaks of the interior of the earth. Seismology is only one tool to image the deeper structure. But here we are talking about the, how the progress the seismology, what are the techniques, how we are locating the earthquake, at NCS, what we are doing for the country, and how we are monitoring the earthquake heading in the country, and how we give him the precise information about the earthquake. We will discuss all details in the uh, in this CCP. I'm going to share my PPT. Yes, yeah, sorry. <sighs> First of all, what is the earthquake? The earthquake is the violent shaking of earth. Somehow shaking the earth is called the earthquake. So why such shaking? This is important. The such shaking may be due to the collapse of cavity, volcanic eruption, breaking of rock, landslide, tectonics, and so many factors of shaking the earthquakes we'll discuss in this city. What is the earthquake? If you talk the earthquake in the point of geophysical point of view, you can say it is the wave, seismic wave, which propagate after the rupturing the fault, and it is characterized by the magnitude only. If you talk in the aspect of the engineering point of view, it is the vibration of earthquake due to the propagating of seismic wave and it is mainly characterized by the intensity. If you talk about the socioeconomic point of view, it is a hazardous natural phenomenon, not much than that, only hazardous phenomena. And it is characterized in terms of monetary or human losses. <clears throat> what are the myths and legends behind the earthquake occur? According to the Hindu, the Hindu believe that the eight earthquake carry the earth, and one elephant get tired, the earthquake occur. According to Mongolian, a gigantic frag that carry the world on its back and move the earthquake occur. African says the gant and whose head we are leave is scratched, the earthquake occur. Japanese believe that the god Kasima weakens and namajo moves than earthquake occur. The people of Peru believe that the God decide to count the population in Peru and his foot steps shake the earth, the native run out of their hearts and yell, I'm here, I'm here. So these are the myths and reasons behind the earthquake. Measuring earthquake by first seismoscope. The first seismoscope was developed by the Professor Cheng Hang in 132 BC. One vessel were kept in the center and eight dragon were inserted at the upper circumference of the vessel and each dragon's mouth had one ball. And at the bottom of the vessel, there are the eight dots and with their wider open mouth, Whenever the earthquake, the direction of the epicenter was rough, reported, yeah, reported to be indicated by the first ball release. 
So it is give the qualitative measurement of the seismoscope by the seismoscope, and then develop slowly, slowly, and we are now we have a digital seismograph. So here you talk about the past and recent significant earthquakes in the India. If you talk the India, the Indian subcontinent has a history of most devastating earthquakes. The Himalaya belt is the most seismically active region in the world. In the time span of 153, there were the eight great earthquakes, one was the nine. 1905 Kangra earthquake, second was the Bihar Nepal 1934 earthquake, Silang earthquake 1897, and another is the Assam earthquake 1950. Apart from these earthquakes, there were several major and moderate earthquakes were also occurred in the Himalayan belt. So these earthquakes caused more destruction and loss of life. If you talk the peninsula in here, a number of strong damaging earthquakes also occurred in the peninsula in India. One was the 1993, the Lathur earthquake, another the Jawalpur earthquake, 1997, and recently in 2001, the earthquake, the casualty is about 20,000, 19,000. So the Andaman and another is the Andaman Sunda are connecting to the southern tip of the Burmese earth, has been associated with several damaging earthquakes and in the, some cases the tsunami, like in 1941 and 1881, all are the first historical earthquakes have generated the tsunami and affected the eastern part of India. 1881 tsunami read the Chennai and height was 1.05 meter. If concerned in the India, so there were the mainly two tsunami zonic sources. One is the Makaran, that is 1945 generated tsunami, and magnitude was eight, and another was Andaman Sumatra subduction zone John, that generated the tsunami in 2004, and magnitude was 9.3, and somewhere mentioned the 9.4. Next, uh, seismicity of map of India and adjoining regions. The data was taken from the National Center for Sociology, and we compiled the, all the historical and instrumental seismicity data of India, and taken data from 1505 to 2019. The most of the activity, including the many great earthquakes along the Himalaya and Andaman Sumatra subduction zone, in the southern peninsula, the damaging earthquakes have occurred, but the frequency than the plate boundary is layer, lower than this the plate boundary. So it is found that the peninsular India has also experienced about 100, mag 100 uh, earthquake magnitude greater than five. Thus, the seismicity in the India subcontinent is needed to understand why because even moderate earthquakes or damage larger area even small earthquake cause public panics so here we plotted the uh, magnitude 1.7 to up to 7 uh, all great earthquake 8.7 the seismic zoning map of india the seismic zoning map of india based on the geological setting seismotectonic setting intensity experience and then divide the seismicity, seismic zone in four sectors. The zone second is the low risk zone, and zone five is the very high risk zone. And we this seismic zone is revised after the uh, some earthquake in the field area, like in 1993 Latour and 1997 Jawalpur and 2001. The earth, the seismic zone is revised and divided into four sectors. So this, this seismic zone has uh, uh, assigned some intensity, like uh, in zone five, the intensity we may expect nine and above, like Himalaya and Kutch. And zone four, we can expect the intensity eight. Zone three, we can expect the intensity seven. And low risk zone in zone two is the four, six and above. 
can expect but lower and expect the, uh, the big ground exploration is also assigned for this um, uh, seismic zone you can expect the peak ground acceleration for zone 5 about uh, 0.4 g and for zone 2 we can expect 0.25 0.2 g is for zone 3 and 0.1 g for the zone 2 so we can classify the earthquake based on the different parameters like a location you can divide the earthquake in two parts interplate and intraplate the earthquake near to the plate boundary is called interplate and intraplate away from the plate boundary is the intraplate based on epicenter distance we can say the local earthquake within 100 kilometer regional earthquake within 100 to 1000 kilometer and teleseismic more than 1000 kilometer Based on focal depth, we can divide the earthquake in the shallow depth, 0 to 70 km, intermediate depth, 71 to 300 km, and deep earthquake greater than 300 to 700 km and greater than 300 km. The based on the magnitude, you can divide the earthquake like a micro earthquake, 1 to 3. And another before the micro earthquake, the ultra micro earthquake, basically less than one uh, magnitude. An intermediate earthquake 3 to 4.9, moderate earthquake 5 to 5.9, strong earthquake 6 to 6.9, major earthquake 7.7.9, and great earthquake greater than 8. So there are no limitation of the magnitude, the lower magnitude or upper magnitude, there are no limitations. You see the some example of the great Assam earthquake of magnitude was 8.6, this moment magnitude MW occurred on 15th August 1950 and this was the sixth biggest earthquake of the 20th century and maximum intensity was observed well and the about 4800 people were killed due to, in the India and China due to this earthquake even railway track were deformed and this was the great earthquake in 1950 and Another earthquake is the Puj, Gujarat earthquake, magnitude was 7.7 .7 and occurred on the Republic Day of 2001 and about 20,000 people were killed and this was the largest intraplate earthquake in the world with the intraplate earthquake because it is away from the Himalaya nearly 1,000 kilometers and 500 kilometers from the Herat chain. So it is away from the, the, the plate boundary. An economic earthquake loss is estimated about five billion US dollars. Another earthquake occurred in the Sumatra Andaman earthquake and magnitude was 9.3 occurred on the 26th December 2004. It was the second largest earthquake in the world. First one, the Chile 9660 and magnitude was 9.6, about 15 to 25 meter displacement opposite to direction of plate motion and upliftment about 2.5 to 5 meter and about 2,30,000 people were killed due to the earthquake and tsunami and hundreds of thousand damaged houses, several million left homeless and economic losses about 4 billion US dollars so estimated for the India and neighboring country. So this was the most devastating tsunami in the history of mankind and height was tsunami about 30 meters near to the source. What could be the damage? The earthquake damage can, can damage the construction of collapse, construction of building, fires due to the broken of gas, electrical lines, landslide, earthquake trigger occur in the hilly and mountainous area, liquefaction in the presence of water due to the shaking of the of ground that lose the strength and liquefaction may occur. Tsunami can grow up to 65 meters. So these are the damage casualties can happen after the earthquake. Here question is the how earthquake occur? What are the mechanism behind that? So this uh, elastic rebound theory were given by the professor Harry Fielding Red in 1910 after the San Francisco earthquake in 1906, 906. And then he given the elastic rebound theory to 
demonstrate the how earthquake occur so if you have the original this is the position of the fault if you apply the stress the rock bend until the strength of rock is exist a rupture occurs and typically in the form of seismic wave when it deform and deformed shape occurs and the energy is released in the form of wave a radiate outward from the wave so these are the mechanism why earthquakes and how earthquakes occur the it's the mechanism simple mechanism is given by the professor rate in 1910 this called the elastic rebound theory if you compile the uh, catalog since 1800 and some cases in 1990 you'll find that the great earthquake you may expect one every year so these are the based on the catalog of the worldwide and then major earthquake you can expect 17 is strong earthquake you can expect 134 moderate 1390 light 13000 and minor 130000 and some very minor 13 lakh we can expect the earthquake every year this is the catalog based information comparison of magnitude and energy frequency energy energy release here i given the magnitude uh, at the richter scale and the great earthquake and compare the how much energy can release after this earthquake like if you have a uh, this uh, gujarat earthquake if you take the gujarat earthquake that magnitude was 7.7 and can release the nearly 52 billion like kilo uh, billion kilogram you have uh, explosive to due to this great gujarat earthquake 2001 so if you compare the moderate lightning bolt earthquake and this compare the two magnitude it can really 56 uh, kilogram explosive like if you have a average tornado and it's equal to the nearly the light earthquake 5 or 4.5 then it can release um, uh, energy about this much and these are the Uh, energy in the kilogram and compare with the how much energy can expect if uh, any earthquake occurred of this range so here uh, two terminology in the earthquake that magnitude and intensity so how can define this two terminology the magnitude is the uh, define how much energy released during the earthquake this is the magnitude and intensity means how much drainage or degree of shaking caused by the earthquake this calculate intensity calculate uh, based on the damage and degree of shaking and intensity is basically physical observation after the earthquake you have to visit the area and you ask the people about what they felt during the earthquake and on the basis of that they assign some value that given by the modified miracle intensity scale and i will explain about the modified miracle intensity in the next uh, slide and if you see how you, from this cartoon you can easily understand what the magnitude and intensity like if you have a 100 watts uh, bulb so that uh, you can say the magnitude and this uh, light of intensity decreases with the distance is it could be near you, you may expect 100 watts similar 100 watts but if you have a uh, some distance you can expect 50 watt 20 watt like that if you have a magnitude the magnitude it decreases with the intensity magnitude is constant everywhere but intensity will decrease it with the distance but depend upon the different factors like a local soil condition that depend upon the types of building and all this thing we expect the intensity like that the quick intensity maps are given by the different uh, scientists researcher uh first one is the gov given a rossi forel a uh, intensity scale and they assigned intensity 1 to 10 then uh, they he uh, successfully applied for the san francisco earthquake 1906 then modified mercal mmi scale or you can say the mmm intensity scale revised 1956 and they assigned the value 1 to 12 and then msk is intensity scale is revised in 1992 and it is from 1 to 12 so these are the scale uh, 
generally applied to the different country, different um, place. So here we basically in India, basically we apply the MMI intensity scale uh, to understand the intensity of the earthquake. Isosessional maps means that if you join the equal intensity map, it's called the equal intensity line is called the isosessional maps. So here the reactor magnitude or modified intensity is called the scale they compare. If you have suppose two magnitude, you can expect the intensity one. Means it is not felt by the human. It is instrumentally recorded. And if you had two, it is felt by few person. If you have intensity three, slight felt by the some person, some doors for damage, some buildings, some uh, upper floor of buildings some can affect like that. If you have a four, then moderate felt indoor by many, outdoor by few during the day, at a night, some working and like that. So these are the Richter and these are the miracle in scale, intensity scale. And what would be the effect due to this intensity scale are given here. So on the basis of this, the after the earthquake, we decide the intensity in the field, how much intensity would be happen during the earthquake. You see that this is the example of uh, 2001 Bhuj earthquake magnitude was seven. So intensity was maximum intensity near the main shock, and that was 10. And intensity slowly decreasing, and it to up to six. The intensity vary from in the touch region intensity basically vary from maximum 10 to 11 12 and slowly slowly in this part the intensity is decreasing so these are the isosessional map prepared after the 2001 quick to assign the intensity value similarly isosessional maps of the large earthquake in india like a kutch earthquake in 1819 the intensity on the mmi scale was the eight and like um, here in the Silang earthquake, the intensity was very few, the same to eight. And some cases like in the 90, 1905 Kangra earthquake, the maximum intensity was eight. So these are the intensity maps already available on the internet, already available in the literature. And these are the isosessional map prepared after the major great earthquake and at the moderate earthquake in the India. So what is the definition of reactor magnitude? So this reactor magnitude was developed by the professor Rector in 1935. So he defined that the any shock is taken at the logarithm of the maximum trace temperature expressed in micron with the standard short period torsion seismometer and would register the shock as an efficient distance at only 100 kilometers. So this means the Richter magnitude would available and could applicable for up to 100 kilometers only. And these are the uh, graph you see. So these are the, the, the distance and the magnitude and amplitude. So how we can estimate the magnitude based on this scale? So if you have a, this P and S wave waveform, so the distance between uh, difference between the p and s travel time is 24 second okay so if you divide the uh, multiply 24 second by 8 then we'll get the distance so this is the thumb rule if you have a uh, p travel time s travel time and you take the difference between s minus v and you multiply by 8 then you'll get the distance and this is the amplitude amplitude was 23 mm and uh, recorded here so if you to connect this line to this distance and amplitude where it is intersect that is called the magnitude and magnitude is major here it is about 5 to uh, ml this is the reactor magnitude so this easily you can determine this scale magnitude scale on the earthquake and reactor magnitude uh, good gutenberg magnitude intensity relationship is also developed if you put the magnitude you can get the energy how much energy release due to this magnitude so here question is the what is the wave and how these waves are propagating how many types of wave the wave is disturbance any disturbances is wave the waves are common in light or sound waves are periodic in the aspect of space in time they have wavelength and frequency period the seismic sources the seismic sources are two types that are natural events and another the man-made event Natural event is the tectonic earthquakes, 
volcanic eruption, rock fall, collapse of crust cavities, storm micro seismic. So these are the natural events, natural, uh, naturally generate the seismic sources. And some sources we can generate by the artificial for different purposes, like explosion and vibrators. These are used for the oil prospect. And reservoir induced seismicity, these earthquakes, mining induced and cultural noise. So these are the noise generated by the artificial. So both are the seismic sources, and these are the generate the waves. So what are the waves? We'll take about that. Like a P wave, they is called the longitudinal wave, or sometimes it's called the irrotational wave, a primary wave, or compressional wave. So, so many names are the P wave. The P wave is the compressional and postpone the waves. Particle move in the same direction in the direction of wave propagation and it can propagate solid, liquid and gas. If you take the S wave that called the shear wave or secondary wave, rotational wave, so this particle move, you see the, this in the animation, the particle move in the right direction in the direction of wave propagation. So it can propagate in the solid but not propagate through the liquid or gas. The love wave is the is, is discovered by the professor A. E. H. Love, and this is called the complex motion, up and down, side to side. Is the slowest because this surface wave causes most damage to structure building. If you have an earthquake uh, away from the this like this can affect the surface wave. The surface wave generally has some more amplitude compared to the body wave, but it's slowest than the body wave. Rayleigh wave is the particle motion is retrograde electrically. You see this particle move the electrically shape. So you can see the example of this Rayleigh wave here. How in the animation the particle move behind that. So is there any similarity between the sound wave or earthquake? So here I given them some points like a speech, the vocal cord vibrate. And this vibration can, ge can generate some vibration in the human body. An earthquake, rupture of the fault, or this generate the vibration in the motherland. Sound wave propagate through the atmosphere, and here sound wave propagate through the earth. Ears record the vibration, and seismometer record the vibration, and brain process the recording, and here seismologist process this recording, recording the seismogram. So what are the properties of seismic wave? The velocity basically, this seismic wave depends basically in the physical property of the rock. And, and generally, the velocity increases with rock density. Velocity changes when passing from one material to other, like a liquid wave. In liquid case, the S wave cannot transmit our P wave slow down in the case of liquid. The so how seismograph work is the important. The so seismograph basically records seismic wave. Okay, it record it works on the principle of pendulum, a heavy inert mass with a certain resistance to movement is called inertia due, due to its weight is suspended from frame of by spring that allow to move. The, here you see the, the contain the weight and a pain attached to a spring. The seismograph is bolted, fixed to the ground. So during the earthquake, it moves the ground while the weight and pain still remain. The pain moves across a rotating paper roll regarding the seismic wave. So these are the principle of the seismograph. So it basically depends on the pendulum principle. And these are the seismograph. It trace the earth vibration. So there's some difference between the seismograph and seismometer. And this a seismometer, uh, yeah, the fundamental idea about this uh, seismograph is the, to record the ground motion, a seismometer must be decoupled from the ground. This is the fundamental idea. If the seismometer moves with the ground, then no motion will be recorded. So it should be fixed. That's why wherever you is, 
install the station, we fix the instruments. Modern system, uh, seismic monitoring, how we are doing, we type of instrument who have the conductive mass is decoupled from the surrounding magnet inside a protective casing. Ground motion causes the mass to move relative to the surrounding magnetic field and this creates an electric current with the amplitude that is proportional to the seismic velocity of the mass. And thus, electric current is transmitted to digitizer. The digitizer converts the analog signal to digital signal. And each digital signal observation is written to a, in the computer form and disk along the corresponding time, this time frequency ground motion. And this time series are downloaded, analyzed, and give the fundamental or uh, basic parameters to the earthquake. And sensitivity of seismograph is ground motion defined basically on the frequency of the motion so that the divide the feet type of seismometer gives the feet types of seismograph so that completely dependent of the frequency of the motion. And variation of sensitivity, uh, sensitivity with the frequency is known as the instrument response of seismometer. So these are the Another is the locating earthquake. How we are locating the earthquake? Locating the earthquake for, for location, we should have at least three stations. So we can give the precise location of the earthquake. For each the, uh, uh, station, like you said, A station, B station, C station, we draw a circle. And circle radius is equivalent to the epicenter distance that is epicenter distance means the distance between the source and station and wherever it intersect three circle each other and that is called the epicenter so these are the manually location of the earthquake but now we have different software different like hypo 71 hypo dd jd different software you have to give the immediate and uh, precise information uh, by this inverse problem you see another this in this cartoon if you see the, this graph like this is the time and this is the distance so if you have a distance at uh, the, the p like a three minute interval means that the difference between the p and s here difference between the p and s p and s it is the increasing it means that your the time interval is increasing your distance is increasing you can determine the distance by multiplying in the in second by eight so if, if you multiply three into six into eight you may get the distance so if your time will be increased between the p and s if distance is increased so this is the fundamental rule for this location the locating earthquake how we are locating now so we have uh, location we should have uh, more station so that you can give the precise information precise location and like uh, you pick the p p and these are converted phases this is the these are the phases depth defended phases p and p pg and these are the depth s and sg sn so we are taking this um, in the different software and we are uh, immediately uh, locate the earthquake and giving the basic parameter for this there are some waveform so you, you should if you have a waveform you can get the different information beneath the earth like it, it this is the simple uh, this simple waveform you see with the p and p star pg means these are the depth dependent phases like it's coming from the moho and it's coming uh, from the conrad discontinuity upper crust and lower crust this is the different with the pg is coming SN, S star, SG, and some LG or RG like that. So some waves are there. So LG basically these are the surface wave and high frequency surface wave. So these are the information uh, we are getting from the seismogram. If you have a broad seismogram and you can get the different information, like here you should have the, the recorded from long distance. So you have a many converted phases like P, 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 P capital. Uh, P triple three times PS like that. So these are the converted phases, and these converted phases gives different information from different depth, and these are using 
uh, for the different to understand the physical processes of the earth and by this method so we have this seismograph we have recording of this station different station different phases and these are gives the information around the world so on the basis of the uh, where you are using uh, this seismograph to uh, study the uh, uh, different physical processes beneath the earth so through this uh, seismograph we um, explore three major radial division that crust mental and core we determine through this seismograph the crust is the most heterogeneous layer in the earth and crust is about 33 kilometer you can expect on the continent this is the average it can vary and 10 kilometer thick beneath the ocean and it can go up to 70 kilometer some places so this the boundary between the crust and mantle is demarcated and demarcated based on the physical chemical process chemical dis differences and it's called the more big discontinuity or in short you can say the moho and discovered in 1910 by the Enrija Mohorvik. So these are the parameters at crushed and different depth of the, we determine from this seismogram. The mental, the earth mental exists from the bottom of the crust to depth of 2,891 kilometer. And some Gutenberg discontinuity there, the upper crust and lower crust separating. And there are the several chambers within the mental, there's upper mental up to 400 kilometer transition zone, 400, 700 kilometer depth and mid and mental 700, 2,650 kilometer depth and the lower mesh, most mental up to 200, 2,891 kilometer depth. So these are the, so they are the different um, uh, depth and different um, properties of the uh, chamber we determine through the this seismograph only. The earth crow. This is the core. So they are the due to the overburden pressure, the core basically freezing and the earth gradually cools. Why due to the overburden pressure? Generally, temperature increases with depth, but due to the overburden pressure, the earth core is actually freezing and the earth gradually cools. The boundary between the liquid outer core and solid inner core. It the occur at the radius about 1220 kilometer, and this sub uh, 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 this discontinuity called the Lehman discontinuity and the boundary between the mental and outer core is sharp and changing in density across the core mental is greater than our surface obviously and the viscosity of the outer core is similar to the water it flow kilometer per year and create the earth magnetic field the outer core is the most homogeneous part of the earth the outer core is the mostly in law and iron and nickel in liquid form this the the as the core phrases latent is released and this heat causes the outer core to can be and so great generate a magnetic field some mechanical layers are there and these are the lithosphere estonosphere and mesosphere so these all the layers play the important role in the tectonics plate movement we'll discuss later on so these layers also are determined or demarcated by this seismograph only. The lithosphere is the combination of the upper crust, sorry, crust and upper mantle, and it would be the uh, 100 up to 100 kilometer generally, the lithosphere uh, part. And there's the not stick boundary between the lithosphere and estonosphere, and there between the crust and mantle. It consists both crust and upper part of the mantle. It behaves recently like a solid over a very long time period. Estonosphere, it exists between depth of 100 to 200 kilometer. It is a weakest part of the mental. And it's solid over short time scale, but we have like a fluid over the million of years. The estonosphere decouple the lithosphere and the, the tectonic plate from the rest of the mental. So these are the important, they play the important role in the movement of the tectonics. So what is the plate actually? The earth crust may be divided into 11 or 12 major units, behavior like a rigid. And there are some observable or noticeable movement. So these are called the plate. So there are the two types of plate, that continental plate 
an oceanic fleet. The continental, located on the continent, and mostly made of the rock of granite, granitic rocks. An oceanic fleet are located in the ocean. They are mostly made of the type of rock called basalt. So these are the plates. If you take the epicenter and you float the global map, you found that you find that the all the epicenter were located where two plates were made. It's, so it means the earthquakes are not located randomly around the earth, but some in manner. So it is the you see this the earthquake located here. You see the example in India, Eurasia, mostly earthquakes where the Indian plate and Eurasian for colliding to each other. And here is some done the months of Zambia. So these are the, similarly in the past because this the ring of fire is called the ring of fire. And these are the, the earthquakes. And there are the three types of motion: convergent boundary, either divergent boundary, or transform point. So we'll tell about the these three motion in the next slide. So what are the theory of this plate motion? Basically, seismologist geologist or geophysicist believe that the main factor of the motion of plate tectonics is convection current that occurs in the mantle. This is because the mantle is made of semi-molten rock called the magma. Convection current beneath the earth can compare the convection current occurs in a boiling pot the same process happening in the mental the convection current occurs because why it occurs because already i told you the crust mental core and there are some other boundary like a lithosphere and ethnosphere all these things the convection current occurs because the very hot material at the deepest part of the mental rise than cool okay and sinking again and heating rising repeating the cycle over and over again. It is also mentioned that the heat rising and falling beneath the mental that create the convection current generated by the radio due to the radioactive decay in the core. Okay. So there if the if suppose the uh, convection current diverse near the earth crust, the plate move away from each other. When convection current convert to each other, then plate move goes toward the, each other. So these are the process of the plate tectonics, plate motion. Why is the plate moving? So these are the convection current can explain the causes of the plate movement. So I told you that, that the three types of plate boundary uh, that called the divergent means one plate goes away from each other. So away from each other, that is divergent. If divergent motion is there, means it's spreading means constructive. Why constructive? Because some magma come out and then formation of some oceanic lithosphere created and topography raise a rift or formed and the volcanic activity can happen. This is similarly in the convergent, convergent in two plate going to each other, there is one subduction and here can happen the more the destructive and it can happen the branch or uh, volcanic activities may be happen in this case convergent, but in transform form, they the lateral sliding to each other and conservative means neither create nor destroy it in the case of transform motion, no major effect. And in this case, you cannot expect the volcanic activity. So these are three types of motion between the plate. So the best example of the continent continent collision and the Indian plate and Eurasian plate and why the, the you can explain the why the earthquakes occur in the India because the whole Indian plate is under the stress due to the movement of the Indian plate toward the north. Okay, so they are the best example of continent continent collision because two plates going to each other and they are Indian and another is the Eurasian plate. So these are gifts. The fault, fault is the fracturing rock. Along with there is the observable or noticeable amount of displacement is called the fault. Fault is the weak part of the crust. Okay, the earthquake occur along the fault because due to the movement 
guys that they have the again they have the different types of fault normal fault thrust fault the, the, the right letter fault or the strike slip fault and the, okay so there are the, some motion like shearing motion you can expect in the strike slip tension you can expect in the normal faulting and compression is at the thrust faulting the most destructive known earthquake record in the world like a uh, first one is the peru this magnitude was 7.9 and these were the casualties you can see in this slide and 1976 china earthquake thanks and magnitude was 7.5 and then similarly mexico earthquake and another in india the 26 january 2001 earthquake about the date is 20000 and then Sumatra and Daman earthquake and the late magnitude was 9.4 and generated some tsunami and this are death due to the uh, tsunami and earthquake both. Here we uh, presented the uh, waveform recorded the uh, Indian network at the so you see the example of you can see if you see the uh, seismograph you can uh, recognize whether it is the teleseismic or local because you see in that this teleseismic this teleseismic event recorded at magnitude was 8.3 until 12, 12 september 2007 in southern sumatra region and recorded the katana station and epicenter distance was nearly about 5000 so here they, you see this the p wave and s wave and some these are the some converted phases and surface wave so here is surface wave is more dominant because the low frequency wave and it, that's why uh this the surface wave is more dangerous in the case of if you have a dish earthquake uh, distance is more we can expect the more case uh, this destruction can occur due to the surface wave and similarly if you see this the local earthquake magnitude what 4.7 in the Kutch region and recorded the same station and distance was uh, nearly about 88 88 kilometer so it means you see this the p wave and s wave the so s wave is dominant in this case and the local earthquake and these are the clearly you can see the this, uh, this the difference between the local earthquake and seismic earthquake okay here i'll talk about the national seismological network so this seismological network has a long history more than 120 years the first seismological observatory was established at the kolkata alipur at first uh, in december 1898 after the great silang earthquake 1897 so the first seismological observatory established in the country it then slowly slowly increased the number of stations and now we have a total 150 stations all over the country and each each uh, the here here we have presented uh, uh, two types of station one is the broadband seismograph another is the strong motion exolograph and this what is the difference i will present it next slide so what the, this broadband seismograph gives the velocity and a strong motion exolograph gives the acceleration that is important for the engineering prospect and this the these are station are connected with the B set at the east side. So these are the uh, one uh, example how we install this uh, broadband and strong motion exograph in the uh, observatory. So we are uh, uh, this is called the vault room, and this the uh, uh, we have this in Chhattisgarh region. Uh, this we this station we installed and install. Uh, on the pillar we try to avoid the anthropogenic noises we generate because that can create some disturbance in the seismogram so we try to avoid for that we made the concrete pillar from the, the extent up to 30 feet depth or 25 feet depth. that depend upon the where we are getting competent rock we, we try to install this uh, seismograph on the competent rock to avoid the anthropogenic noise and this uh, so what are the difference between seismograph and accelerograph? The seismograph is give the velocity with time during earthquake, and acceleration is give during the time. This is the accelerograph, and capable to record very small ground motion. Can uh, record the strong ground, ground motion, and will go out the range of da damage if subject to very strong ground motion. Mean to record the strong ground motion only. Generally, recording done at 24 hours. And here in the case, we 
kept in the threefold mode. Like if you have a magnitude three, then you can expect the recording in this epsilon cloud. And ground frequency about one hertz and above can fit fully recorded. And that depends upon the sensitivity of seismograph, the different of seismographs. So they are short period, long period, broadband, very broadband. So there are different uh, types of seismographs are there. And ground frequency at zero hertz to about 50 hertz can fit fully uh, recorded. And sensor has a small natural frequency, one hertz or below. Sensor has a natural frequency generally above 100 hertz, like that. So why we are doing the monitoring of the earthquake is the important. Why? What is the purpose of this earthquake instrumentation? What is the purpose? The purpose is the understand the where the earthquake effect and where the earthquake occur. Give the immediate information. For that, this is the this is this is the task of seismologist. Vulnerability we determine the structure, exposure of the structure towards the susceptibility of the damage or collapse. Risk is the combination of a product of the hazard, vulnerability, and in exposure time, in worse subcapacity. So this task of the management and operating systems and vulnerability, this task of basically engineering. So our vision is to the safe life and minimize damage due to the earthquake. So this is the important, why we support in the earthquake monitoring, so that we can uh, give the precise information of the parameters of the earthquake as soon as possible, what we are doing at the NCS. If you see the seismograph, the, you can understand the difference between the explosion and earthquake. And it recorded the Nilor Pakistan um, uh, Observatory. And this is an Indian nuclear test occurred on the uh, May 11, 1998. Magnitude was estimated that was 5.1. And similar earthquake, no, not similar, but magnitude was 4.8 and uh, recorded the same station. So you can see here the P wave is more dominant in the case of Indian nuclear test and F is diminishes. But surface wave is very dominant in the case because it recorded a longer distance and here surface is diminishes. So these are the difference between if you have a nuclear test recording, if you have a India earthquake recording, you can discriminate the distance easily. So these are the, this is the example for the explosion. What are the data flow from the station to the publication media? So we have a total 150 station broadband and 150 strong machine accelerograph connected with the VSET. Data is uh, receiving through the uh, this P set at the central receiving station. Are we this uh, uh, this seismograph automatically analyzed through the uh, one software is called the Seismocom three, and we are uh, giving a preliminary information of the earthquake parameter. Then our seismologist uh, analyze the events reanalyze the seismograph and then finally we are disseminating the information of the earthquake through the different media like fax uh, sms facebook or uh, this sms through we are giving this information to the different authority different people different place like that the center receiving station ncs so these are the Parameter we provided within minute, the location, magnitude, focus, likely affected area. And then we provided already told you the SMS final, the phone, fax, email. These are 24 by 7 based uh, service. And it would not be possible without national seismological network. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Dr. A.P. Singh, for a very informative and basic talk about how earthquake occurs. So we do have several questions. I am keep uh, sending it to you through the chat window. OK, sir. I could not uh, hear. Yeah. It's there. Okay, the question is how many minutes or hour before the earthquake early warning system predict the earthquake in advance? What is the nation capacity in what? Okay, so this is our talking about the earthquake early warning system. That the earthquake early warning system giving the information 
uh, a few second you can say 10 second uh, before you can give because here we are giving the information and the warning before arriving the s wave s wave is more dangerous in case of local earthquake so before the arriving the s wave you are giving the information so this the that depend upon the distance but at the distance second only why kach gujarat experience large size earthquake even it away from the plate boundary okay good okay the kach is basically intraplate earthquake i told you this away from the uh, uh, 1000 km away from the himalaya and nearly 400 km away from the herajam fault so because this the uh, rocks are very competent and is able to because these are the even the basaltic rock or mafic rock at the depth they are the competent and would able to uh, uh, store the energy so that's why it, the region the earthquake experience in the kutch is more large why earthquake are more dangerous interflate and interflate and why why earthquakes are more dangerous in interflate okay so interflate earthquake because the population is more and that then even the moderate earthquake can more affect compared to the interflate so that depend upon the only the population the interflate like boundary near the himalayan is very fear very sparse population and interflate very dense population that's why how do policy maker make decision for the development of earthquake or mitigation program in interflate region and assess be given in it so policy maker for that we uh ncs we are doing the uh, uh this seismic micro generation of the uh, different city and this seismic micro generation we give the uh final parameter like a risk map will prepare and that is important for the policy makers this make uh, this may be the native question why are the low magnitude earthquake are more frequent than high magnitude earthquake in the world low magnitude earthquake are more frequent okay the so low magnitude earthquakes are basically different types of causes like a swarm activities are uh, are there the swarm activities uh, are the, due to the different region like uh, some uh, researchers are telling this the uh, monsoon induces is someone telling it the percolation of water or these are the uh, region the swarm activities are generating more uh, in the interflate region compared to this high magnitude okay next uh thank you dr pissing those okay. are the points thank, and, uh, thank, thank you. you very much for uh, sparing your time with the uh, moes webinar thank yeah. you thank you we can go offline now